Good morning, my friends. We are heading out of Gallup today and we are heading back towards Flagstaff. There's something I want to check out a little north of Flagstaff, so let's hit the road. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. Yeah, so what I want to take you guys to check out today is, well, it's part of a national park, but it's also a filming location and there's a really cool history to it. Well, you can tell by our sign off to the side of the road, we have just entered Arizona. Want to stop off and take in a few of these little Native American shops off to the side of the road. Mainly I want to go check this out, Yellow Horse. Well, that's a bummer, it's not open. I really wanted to check this out because they have a cool cave painting way back in there and you can see some teepees on top of the cave. Well, let's pop in this guy then. Over here on their map, you can see exactly where we are. Lupton. Sorry, they said no photos or filming in the store. They did have some really cool stuff though, I will say that. Some really cool turquoise rings and things like that. All right, let's move on. I want to show you guys something I just saw off the side of the freeway. Check this place out. See, this used to be a general store too, but they literally built like a fort here, like a Fort Apache. <laughs> now it's just abandoned, all for sale. I don't know, I guess it could become the new Days with Jordan the Lion compound. A lot of land to work with out here. You can actually go in that little fort. Now it's actually kind of sad is that's really cool architecture. And you can tell the pancake house on its last legs was a Taco Bell Express. There's our pal Geronimo. All right, we are now off the freeway and we are an hour away on the back roads heading into the forest. And I believe this forest is called the Coco Nino. Here we are, Wupatki National Monument. It's a windy one today. So what was filmed out here? Well, one of the scenes from Easy Rider, starring uh, recently deceased Peter Fonda and the great Dennis Hopper. So there's actually quite a bit to see out here. There's a few Pueblos because um, long before the reservations, there were thousands of tribes of Hopi Indians out here living out here. So I think there's four or five different Pueblos, but we're going to the one at the visitor center. same road they would have brought those motorcycles out on too. So it looks like it's a very short hike from the visitor center so let's do it. It has 100 rooms, a tower, community room, ceremonial ball court. This village may have been just as monumental to travelers of 800 years ago as it is today. Kind of reminds me of the easy rider bike and helmet of Captain America. Yeah, I love when that sign said ceremonial ball court because they basically mean the early version of basketball. So here's what they suspect it would have looked like back in the day when it was in full usage. See, it would have been its own community. And that is right over there. Take a look at that. And then here you can see they've got uh, what looks like either gaming or socializing right here. back there. 
Yeah, when we see this in Easy Rider, this is when they've picked up that hitchhiking hippie. And they all come out here to camp for the night. Yeah, they said this had 100 rooms. It could accommodate up to like a thousand people would be here. Wow. Sorry in advance for all the wind. Can't help it. Kind of reminds me of being in Pompeii and on Malta, looking at the early structures of how things were built. That's a great scene. They all ride their motorcycles out here with that hitchhiker. And they're out here camping for the night, smoking a joint. Yeah, if you haven't seen Easy Rider in a while, go back and rewatch it. It's a pretty cool scene. And just knowing that the natural history out here, it's incredible. this was constructed and all this red this would originally have been black it's changed over time Think of how long that's lasted. How long that would have taken to construct. And then were these holes all over the place? Were those for water? Were those for air passages? How did they... Because I did read that they used to have to collect rainwater for any kind of water source out here. Now I want to go find exactly 
where they filmed that scene, that campfire scene. Let's go back up here. I think it's probably up here somewhere. Here you can see some of the black rock. Let's go down and check out the ball court. So the ball court is kind of what I was mentioning earlier about where they had a primitive version of basketball and it worked pretty similar to basketball. The only difference was instead of the hoop being one that you throw the ball up and it would come down and go straight down, the hoop was set um, going vertical like that. So you actually threw the hoop, the ball through the hoop like that, bouncing it off of a wall that the, the hoop would have been basically attached like this instead of like this. So you shoot the ball through there. And you can see it's out here. It is insanely windy out here today. Woo! All right, here's a demo of them using the ball court for probably various types of sports. This one looks a little bit more like rugby where they're throwing the ball around or whatever it is that they have, throwing things around. But I've seen where they have a game very similar to basketball. It says this ball court is 78 feet wide, 102 feet long, and had a six foot high wall. They said they excavated this in 1965. So, take a look. This is definitely not a six foot high wall, so that makes sense that, like I mentioned, they would have had a wall that went a little bit higher on one side than they would have had that hoop, kind of like that, or that ring, it was like a, like a circular ring like that, and then you'd run up and kind of do a layup and try and hit it off the wall in through the hole. It's really neat though to come out here and get to see stuff like this. Don't get me wrong, I love that they're always doing excavations and always learning something new, but I feel like every time I go somewhere that has anything historical like this, they're always digging up more and more somewhere and there's like a whole chunk of it that's sectioned off that you can't see while I'm there. It's not happening today, we get to see everything. I saw when I was coming in that they had examples of broken pottery and different things that they would have found out here when they were excavating in some of the um, baskets and things that were weaved were weaved out of yucca. Pretty interesting. I mean, look at that. There's even a piece of wood in there. Now it says that they found like over 200 of these in Arizona, different ball courts all over the place. So they think that these were always put out somewhere for like a social gathering so that people from different areas could all converge in, in that place and it was like a way of them all socializing together. So here we have what they call a blowhole. A crack in the earth's crust that seems to blow air out. And they, they've investigated, oh, I feel it. They've investigated, they, they don't believe that it was, uh, that it was used for any prehistoric purposes, but they found a few of them out here. Down here, this looks like a little theater of some sort. Like an old dance area or maybe gathering area. Now if you take a look up here, you can see that there are uh, some wood beams in there. Those have been in there for 800 years. And if you look over here, there's another one of those air holes. 
Now, of course, nobody lives out here now, but in the 1930s, the park ranger actually lived inside here. <laughs> and uh, they say that the, um, the spirits of the people that passed away that lived out here throughout those hundreds of years still live out here and still keep an eye on the ground. So they request everybody not to take rocks or disturb anything or disrupt anything that's out here. That the park ranger in the 1930s lived right in here in these sections. You can see there's like a kind of connecting thing that I wish we could go in these rooms and look around, but I totally understand why they don't allow it. Because look at that, there's like a whole row of black rocks right in there. Now I know that they shot the opening ride sequence out there on that road that we came in on, but I'm kind of convinced that they might have filmed the campfire scene somewhere additional to this. I want to go look at Lamont Key Ruins. There's a couple other ruins around here. I want to see if maybe I can find the exact spot there. If you can make it out here, I highly recommend exploring it. Let's get a nice shot from over here over top of some of these old rocks. Look at that, isn't that incredible? That landscape. I really wanted to see the Wapaki ruins anyway because I know it's the biggest set of ruins out here. But I could tell by looking around, I was like, that scene just wasn't here. I just couldn't find the exact spot. This is the one that I think it is. Let's check this out. Okay, so you can tell that we just parked right here. We're gonna hike out to this. Same story goes for out here. They believe that the people that died out here still, their spirits still linger here and they ask you not to mess with stuff. Okay, let's start up here. Looks like there's a trail that goes all the way around. Be right over here. Truth be told, I'm looking for one thing in particular. There was a little hole, like a little air hole, up in a corner, and I didn't see it anywhere at the last place, so that's what I'm looking for here. Oh, this was their farmland over here. I have a feeling it's back there, so I wanna go back to the far back ones first. Cause we can hit this one on the way back. wander through these. Yeah, that's kind of cool. All right, my friends, I don't believe it. I finally found it. This is it right here. I didn't think it was originally because of that hole, but the campfire shadow covers that. You actually see Hopper, the hitchhiker, and Peter Fonda over here, and there's that air hole I was looking for right up in the corner. That completely matches up. So that means that the cameraman would have been perched right in there probably, or somewhere right over here, and they would have shot that right here. That is absolutely where that was. No question now. Because you can see the huge uh, jump from here to here, and then how it kind of levels off right there. I'll try and uh, screenshot it and put it in there so you can match up this right here. That's really cool. Glad I found that. And there it is. You can see that little hole up there to the right above their heads. 
Yeah, so in that shot we just saw, Peter Fonda would have been directly below the hitchhiker, and then Dennis Hopper, they would have all been right there. All right, by golly, we found it. Now let's head out of here. So how I found it is once you get out to this set of ruins, this is where the trail starts to wrap you around. Once you see this, it's literally just right around the corner. If you want to come out and visit it yourself, it's right there. But seriously, watch your step because I've tripped a couple times out here. See what I mean? Pretty cool to think about all those decades ago, them coming out here to film that, that spot. Yeah, let's check out this badge up here. Well, I think we've seen enough out here. We're gonna call it a day, folks. Hope you guys enjoyed a little something different today. A little Native American culture, a little easy rider history, fun times. Thank you everyone for watching. We'll see you all tomorrow from somewhere else. I hope you're enjoying this road trip. If you wanna help contribute to this channel, go to www.patreon.com slash Jordan the Lion or paypal.me slash Jordan the Lion. Have a great night, everyone. We'll see you all tomorrow. Goodbye.